On August 26, 1950, The Fencing Master, which is a film that was directed by Masahiro Makino, released in Japan. It was taken from a screenplay by Akira Kurosawa. It released only a day after Kurosawa's Rashomon. It was one of five films that were either written or co-written by Kurosawa, all premiering in the same year of 1950. Kurosawa adapted Fancy Master, and it was taken from a play of the same name, which was written by Cohen Hazagawa. The play itself premiered in March of 1949. Kurosawa wrote the screenplay on his own, but it was reported that he faced some problems from the American occupation censors. This is right after World War II. And this resulted in the screenplay having to be resubmitted twice. Eventually, it was filmed. The story is set in the late 1910s. It centers on the character of Tateshi Danpe. And he's sort of a typical Kurosawa hero. And you could say that because he's very headstrong, he's somewhat childlike, and he's just so concentrated on what he does that he fails to pay proper attention to the people close to him. His occupation is a fencing master, but he actually doesn't work as a martial arts instructor. Instead, he's the theater choreographer. And he's made a name for himself, and he's done this by arranging sword fighting scenes and plays. But as he's getting older, he finds himself becoming less and less in demand. The tastes of the directors and audiences are changing with the times, and they're calling for a more realistic approach to the sword fighting. His approach to fighting is more set on style rather than realism, and he's finding it difficult just to adjust to these new requirements, and he's also just unable to understand the meaning of the term realism. And this story is significant because it's an early example of a concept that we'll later see in Rashomon. And even four years later would be seen in Seven Samurai. And that's basically just the realism in the depiction of Chambara. The samurai film genre was changing. It used to be more play oriented. Now it's becoming more, you know, cinematic. Kurosawa's screenplay would be used again in the 1962 remake under the same name. That film would be directed by a different director and in color. And I've seen both of them. I do plan on making a separate video for that just because there's more stuff I want to talk about. But that's definitely the superior version. It's a lot better than this one. Unfortunately, the original 1950 version was never made commercially in English subtitles. Both films are available now, subtitled in English, on SamuraiDVD.com. It's the only place to get it. If you've never visited the site, I highly recommend it. It's got tons of samurai movies. Everything. Many of the films you can't get anywhere else, and they've never been translated into English until now. And you can use the discount code Bushido Blues at checkout. So getting back to the film, as a bit of a side note, in 1955, Masahiro Makino, the same director, directed what appears to be a sequel to The Fencing Master. Its title is Such Is Life. The original Fencing Master play was also adapted for television twice, first in 1962 and then again in 1964. This time with the screenplay written by the original playwright, Cohen Hazagawa himself. <laughs> so now let's get on to the movie itself. And despite Akira Kurosawa's name being among the credited writers of this film, 
the film is kind of a mess. I don't think it's very good. The story basically follows an obsessive fight choreographer, and he works for a stage production, and he lets everything in his life just take a secondary place to his pursuit of his art. And his choreography is rooted in an old-fashioned style that doesn't really please the modern audience. <laughs> But Dante is just so oblivious to any other viewpoint except his own that, despite the fact that he's shown to be an object of respect to his friends, nothing about his character is really likable, at least not to the film viewer. He's a bit of a jerk, he lets his wife get sick and die rather than leaving his traveling theater group, even though it doesn't really require his services at the time. And after she ends up dying alone without him, there's a time jump and it's not really done well because it's kind of confusing. And it just seems so confusing due mostly to just the seemingly irrational behavior on the part of most of the characters. Masahiro Makino is a good director, but he's no Kurosawa. He's directed some films that I like, like Ronin Guy, but that was like 40 years after this one, so he's not quite there yet. Yakuza Vina was also good, I did a video on that. So I'll give him that, but still, nowhere near as good as Kurosawa. But I found most of the film just confusing both textually and visually. Worst of all, it's not very entertaining. So there is little to recommend about this film. I mean, the only thing I could recommend about it is if you want to see everything that Kurosawa has his name attached to. But as of now, I just recommend going for the remake, which I'll cover in the next video. So stick around for 1962's The Fencing Master. Anyway, you could get this film or the remake on SamuraiDVD.com, use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout, and like always, thanks for watching.